Hello, I'm Mike. I'm Isabella. From musicradiocreative.com. In this video, we'll talk to you about how to create a vocal booth at home. Okay, let's face it, there are many options out there, from the very cheap to the very expensive, and those in between, those that take a lot of time, those that are very easy to implement, and we want to find the sweet spot. Right up front, it's very important to let you know that this video is sponsored by Isovox. They make great isolation booths, and we'll be talking a little bit more about that solution later on. But just so you know, the sponsorship does not taint the comment we're about to have on how to build your own vocal booth. So let's get into it, Isabella, with a very cheap and easy solution. What is that? This one involves buying cheap tiles and gluing them onto your walls. When you say cheap tiles, you mean those foam tiles that you can yeah. buy from many retailers. They come in a big sort of vacuum packed box. Yeah. And then how do you get them on the walls? The way we've done it is we've simply glued them right on. Oh, which... but that was the first mistake. That what was... happened when we glued? Well, not when we glued, after we glued. <laughs> so whilst it kind of worked when we glued them, the problem really was very transparent when we tried to take it off and it took a lot of time it was two yes. or three days of hard work of stripping the walls and it was take a look at these walls look at these walls describe the process isabella so it was it was just very painful as you yeah. can see there were lots of bits with glue residue and the problem with glue is it's not flat so obviously it raised the the surface of the wall made it uneven bobbly and it was <laughs> impossible to very easily clean it off. So I ended up having to use a sander. It was one of those electric sanding machines. And it just took ages to try to smooth the surfaces out and get rid of the glue residue. Absolutely. So putting those tiles on your wall, they will do the job. They will isolate your vocals and make you sound better. But it's a bit of a process. I did occasionally have a tile falling on my head as well. But there are other problems such as dust. Dust on the tiles. Yes. Dust. Mold. Condensation. All forming behind there and the odd spider diving in behind the tiles. <laughs> but for those who are watching this video and thinking, well, I want to start at the low end, at the basic end, at the entry level. I just want a better sound. I don't care about the, you know, the cleanliness so much or the, the glue. Maybe you have another solution on how to get these tiles up, Isabella, without leaving sticky glue residue, which we learned pretty fast. <laughs> we certainly did. So the way you would need to do it is you need to, in a way, construct a fake wall and glue them onto a, some sort of board and then drill in the board into the actual wall so that you are what? introducing and I can't believe we have not thought about this it would yeah. have saved so much time but on the other hand this does require you to be quite technical you may need to hire somebody to help you especially with cutting things to size making yeah. it look and you know well, you can get OCD. a room divider right and glue them onto the room divider and just uh, yeah you can kind of get a plasterboard and you know just yeah. just glue it into the plasterboard and then just attach the plasterboard to the wall. I mean, you know, it's yes. not a rocket science kind of thing. Needless to say, if you're renting, check with your landlord before you do anything like this. And, and I will also add, it's not the prettiest solution as well. No, it's not. So if Although you can get something that's default, for, you know, different from the default stock grey. Well, you can. And you I can think that blue. the options are coming up now. There is quite a few that, that are interesting. But I think that, you know, you just kind of have to weigh all the pros and cons, decide whether that is for you or if you may want to just take a step up and go let's talk about that. a step up let's let's go a step up isabella Woo! let's talk Bring about the, the up. yeah let's talk about the <laughs> high end uh kind of tiles that you might put in your room now when we moved from our foam room uh to our new high-end studio we did actually get our studio specced out didn't we we went to a a pro company that designs these tiles now just set to say at the high end some of the tiles a single tile alone costs around 500 dollars. so yeah. this is not a cheap solution i think we spent uh nearly three thousand dollars on these sound tiles so it's, no, it's a we... high-end solution whereas yeah. you can spend about 10 times less than that you can spend about three hundred dollars on those entry-level foam tiles Isabella tell us a bit more that's right so this is this is the next level so what we've done is we went to a pro company that is effectively making sure that your room is perfectly acoustically treated so those companies tend to work with big uh, production studios or with musicians who really want to up their game now the way they work they ask you first for pictures of your room 
room where you know the where are you recording which way you are facing and then based on that they are going to come up with a recommendation of what materials to use and where to place them Absolutely. And with those designs that come out on placement of tiles and how many you need, I do get a concern that as these companies are in the business of selling tiles, there may be the temptation to recommend a few more tiles than you actually need in a room. Going back to the foam tile solution of not covering the whole wall in foam or the whole ceiling in foam. So you have to use your own judgment there, really. And it looks great. And just, they look great. They're premium. Just as you can see behind both of us, that, that those are still uh, the, the little elements that we bought before. They look great. If you are a visual creator, if you record a video, you definitely want to invest a little bit more and have something that you can showcase as part of your set. And this definitely yeah. is it. But maybe you don't want to go to town. Maybe you don't want to spend mega bucks, but also you're not interested in the really cheap solution. You certainly don't want to go around and treat your entire room. And maybe you move around. Maybe you're portable with your recordings. Is there a third way, Isabella? <laughs> now, this is where Isofox come into, comes yes. into place. And it's such a nifty solution for those who do not have room or cannot physically put things on the walls, which there are plenty of you out there. Now, you get pro recording quality with a super nifty yes. portable booth. Absolutely. It reduces the sound coming into the Isofox booth, but it also reduces the noise going outside. So if you happen to be in a neighbourhood where you're kind of like on top of each other or paper thin walls, you won't annoy your neighbours by doing voiceovers at three in the morning or wailing out your lungs recording your latest hit single, right? Correct, but it also blocks things such as computer fans, ventilation, outside noise, such as, you know, cars going past. So if you have really, you know, single glazed windows and you hear every single mm. vehicle that comes past your house, that all is going to be eliminated. What I also like about Isofox, as you'll see here, is the ease of setting the booth up. I mean, when it all arrived in a very neat package uh, via our local courier driver, I pulled all the parts out and I literally had it assembled within about 15 to 20 minutes, Isabella. That's right. And the important thing to mention about it as well is it isolates both you and the microphone. Yes. Which Other none shields of the, don't. When none of the shields will ever be able to do. And yep. that is the unique part of that specific solution because in a way you are creating this miniature room above your head and your microphone, yes. which is, you know, it's it's quite cool. It's quite cosy. And as you'll see from this GoPro situation going on here, uh, you know, I am right there up next to the microphone isolated by these lovely walls. Uh, it's a way to get studio quality recordings in the comfort of your own home if you travel around if you move if you need to move your recording location it's good for that i'd say if you're a musician if you're a producer if you're a voiceover artist if you're a singer isovox is going to be a great solution for you if you don't want to spend the mega bucks or if you're slightly above you know just getting a bunch of gray tiles and spray gluing them to the wall please don't spray glue tiles to the wall no. that's the big take home from this video no the the one uh, thing to mention about yeah. vi uh, isovox it is not designed for for a long speech or a podcast because obviously you are isolated in you a tiny booth so <laughs> you are not going to be sitting there able to sit there for like 50 minutes or 60 minutes well you minutes. could do it just you take breaks do, but and you have will water. need to take breaks but if yeah. you have shorter voiceovers if you are a musician singer and record sessions that is easy perfect for it absolutely to check out the isovox 2 booth Click the link in the description now. And thank you, Isovox, for sponsoring this video, this debate, this discussion on building your own home vocal booth. And I wonder what you're doing to protect your voice bouncing around and getting that terrible echo and background noise. How are you sound treating your recording space? Let us know in the comments to this video. Music Radio Creative.com